It's a little intimidating, Jerry, to stand in front of that thing. Gee, many Christmas. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Good, good, good. 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 It's good to see everybody. Wow. Do I need that? Yes. I do? Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll open it up the floor with questions. Front row, uh, middle, Dave from 247 Sports. Hi, Kerry. Welcome back. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate um, it. It's great to see you. Um, I'm curious what the conversation was like with Mike Rabel when he told him, I'm coming back to Ohio State. Uh, that's a great you know, I think a lot of the things that happen in these transitions are private, and they should be. Uh, I can tell you that Mike was great. I went to Tennessee because I love Mike Vrabel. That's why I went. I love Mike Vrabel more two years after working with him than I did when I got there. And uh, I think he realizes that. Uh, I think he feels that. I love his family. And uh, he knew that this was, in his heart, he felt like this was the best thing for me. He said, if that's what you want to do, then I want to support you. He, he, was, he was fantastic from the minute that, it, that uh, the conversation began to take place. Coach Tate said it's going to be a collaborative effort on, on defense as far as who's going to be calling the defense. But he said it's going to be, you, you're going to have the final say. Yep. Um, just your thoughts on working with Greg Madison and Larry Johnson again. Just your thoughts on, on working with those guys. i got to be honest with you, I couldn't be more excited. You know, I, I, if you can imagine, I, we had that AFC championship game and then I'm out and I'm on the road and I'm not here and I don't get to see anybody. And just this week, we've been able to sit down and start to talk defense and watch the Buckeyes play. I got to watch it on the road. I took the computer with me. I watched the whole season and how well they played, how hard they played. You know, there's, there's no reason for us to make massive changes to what they're doing defensively. What they're doing here is great. What we're doing now is great. We have great players. We have great coaches. Greg, Larry, Al, Matt, those guys have done a phenomenal job. So for me, right now, I'm in the meeting room with them in the afternoons learning what they did trying to make sure that I'm adopting their terminology and the playbook, going to make additions to it, going to make some alterations to it. But at the same time, those guys are phenomenal coaches. I've known Greg Madison for a long, long time. When I was coaching high school football, and he was coaching at the team up north. So we've had a long relationship. Uh, obviously, I've coached with Larry. Um, getting to know Al and Matt, and they are terrific. And so I'm really excited to be working with those guys. Thank you. Right behind them, Bruce from Sports Illustrated, Maven. Hi, Bruce. Hi, Kerry. Um, I wonder the significance of your defensive coordinator, not co-defensive coordinator. Jeff Hafford is co-defensive coordinator with Greg. Was that a condition of you coming here? Is that important to you? Don't some, make, what? I don't make conditions. Ryan Day's our head coach. Don't do anything like that. I wouldn't do anything like that. And I don't, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not going to get a whole, get real bogged down and all that. I don't think anybody will. We're in there right now. we got a lot of voices talking. We've got a lot of voices listening. And it really, when he says collaborative effort, I've been a part of some really good staffs here, right? And I was just a part of a really good staff at Tennessee defensively. And I think defensive football, offensive football is best played when everybody's got a voice and everybody has input. And, and that's the way we're going to operate. And I can't tell you any more than that. That's how we're going to operate on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, game day. What do you guys think? What do you like here? You know, those kind of things. And, and, and that's how I anticipate the entire process going for the entire time that I'm here. So it was not a suggestion or a condition? On nope. Your um, the other thing I was curious about is you were here before and you were highly successful and you've developed Thanks. the guys who've been successful at the next level. Thanks. But after a couple of years in the NFL, what did you learn and why do you think you're better now? I assume you do think you're better now. Than you I will tell you that I am, in my opinion, you guys will be the judge of that and the, obviously the scores will indicate, but I am a, I'm infinitely better than I was two years ago. And I can tell you exactly why. And I did not expect that, to be honest with you. Uh, I wasn't going to the Tennessee Titans or the NFL to become a better football coach. I was going there because Mike Vrabel asked me, and I love Mike Vrabel. That's why I went. But I will tell you that the experience was phenomenal, and there's really three reasons why. First of all, the volume of defense in the NFL is incredible. I have a library that is this huge, as big as all outdoors, of defensive football now. Now, you can't play it all here, but you can play some of it. You can pick, and you can choose, and now we have – options and I've, I've, it was a great learning experience from one of the great uh, two of the great defensive minds in the history of football Dean Pease and Mike Brady so that was outstanding the second thing was I got to learn another leadership style from another great leader I have coached for and with some great leaders in my career Mike's style is distinctly different than Urban's style It's distinctly different than Brian Kelly's style he has his own way of leading a team man did I learn some great things from Mike and then the last thing that I didn't expect was that you have to coach different in the NFL. You know, I thought that. I thought that people told me that. You know, but you do. 
And when I coached high school football, I had a particular style that worked in high school football, or at least I think it did. When I came to Ohio State, I had another style, not drastically different than the high school style, right? And, and, and to be honest with you, it was pretty much this. Hey, go do that. And guess what? They go do that, right? For different reasons in high school and college, but they go do it. When you get to the NFL and you say, hey, go do that. They say, yeah, coach, that's great, but tell me why. And I'm going to be honest with you, when you have to contemplate every drill, every coverage, everything you do, and you have to have a why behind it, it makes you a much better coach. Not just because you have to think about it, but because you have to explain it to somebody. And I can't wait to get my hands on these guys and be able to start to explain to them why we're doing these things. Right? Not just here's, here's what. It, it will make them better. But that was a, it was a phenomenal part of the experience of being in Nashville. From our right, Bill from the dispatch. Hi, Bill. Good to see you again. You too. Uh, that was kind of what I wanted to ask, but I also want to ask you, when you were here last time, you played almost exclusively press man-to-man. -man. Uh, they've gotten away from that to some degree. It's a mixture now. What's it going to be in, in Ryan and I'm sure you talked about it. It's going to be a Absolutely. Um, how much more comfortable do you feel with playing zone coverage and all that stuff and teaching zone coverage now than when you the, were here? The, the, And again, the great thing about spending two years with the Titans, we played every coverage there is. We're the only team in the NFL that played every coverage there is. We played three deep, we played two deep, we played quarters, we played press man, we played zero man to man, we played two deep, five man, or we played it all. You know, Dean, because Dean has that great catalog, right? And I love what they're doing here. I, I, we're not going to change a lot of that. Now, are we going to play press man to man? You bet your bottom dollar we're going to play press man to man because we're going to be really good at it. We're going to have the guys that can do it, and we're going to be really good at it. We're going to play three deep, single high, a whole lot because that's what they've done here and been very successful with. Right? So there'll be some things, some additions. No reason for me to tell the world what they're going to be. There'll be some coverage additions to what we do. But we're, our base is going to be single high defense. That's what we're going to play. And you're going to have a pretty inexperienced secondary. Um, I would say Sean Wade's back, but not nobody else in terms of being stars. How confident are you that they'll play the standard that last year's and previous units had? Very. Why? Very. Because, first of all, because they're great players. Okay, I, I've watched them. I recruited a bunch of them. I know who they are. I've watched them work out the last couple of days. I've watched their tape. These guys got to play a lot of ball last year, which is outstanding, right? You, you guys who weren't starters that get 250, 300 plays of football at, at high levels in critical games. Uh, and, and so I'm excited about that. But I've, I've had a good chance to meet with these kids. I know what they're made of. A lot of them I, I've known from when they were in high school, and I'm very excited about them. Uh, don't worry about them. We're going to be just fine, Bill. We're going to be just fine. Front row right, Austin Letterman Rowe. Hi, Austin. Hey, Terry. Good to see you again. Thanks. Well, I, you know, you were still having the same success with Tennessee that you had here. Thanks. Those defenses were, were pretty good. And you went to the Not bad. Again. Yeah, we did. So you went there, you proved yourself. You could have probably stayed. Why Why is the college game, do you think, maybe a better fit? I know you coach at every level. Yeah. But this was, this was the choice you made. Yeah. Why? I love Ohio State. I, I don't want to understate this, and I missed it. Uh, I missed the development of the player. I a good one talking about this. I, I missed the development of the player, and, and it, we were still able to develop players at Tennessee. Those players were better, I think, than they were when we got there. Okay, so I, I, I don't think you stop developing. I don't think guys get in the NFL and they quit getting better. Mm -hmm. I really don't. I love, I love recruiting. I love going into high schools and talking with high school coaches. I love meeting players when they're 16, 17, eight year, 18 years old and seeing that transition from a boy to a man. I love being behind the stage on a draft night and seeing a kid realize his dreams. I love coming out of that tunnel on a Saturday afternoon. I can tell you that every Sunday when I walked into the stadium at, uh, in Nashville, every Sunday there was a lady who sat by the gate and she was a huge Titans fan. It was every Sunday. And she, I would go by there and would not fail. She'd say, OH. <laughs> because she was also a Buckeye. They're everywhere. And Buckeye Nation is really, really powerful. Uh, I think you always make career decisions based on what's best for your family. I love my family. I have seven grandchildren in Cincinnati. Uh, three of them are moving uh, to Detroit, but uh, that's going to be okay. And, uh, and, and so I, I'm an Ohio guy. I love it. I missed it. And I'm really, really excited to be back. And I want you to understand, I wasn't leaving there. I tell people this all the time. I didn't leave Tennessee. I came to Ohio State. I came back. Does that make sense? And, and I'm, I'm really excited to be back. Does it, does it feel 
any different? I mean, Urban's not here. Some of the other guys you work with are gone. Yeah. When you walked in the Woody, did did you sense a change? Did it feel exactly as you left it? What was the first day like when you were back? Well, the first day was four hours long, and it was brutal, but that's okay because I had to get on a plane and go recruit. But I know this. I put my thumbprint in the whole thing, and the door opened. And that was really cool, right? So, so I wasn't gone that long. What's up, Gene? You brother? I'm back, baby. I'm back. Pharaoh. <laughs> Amen. You know, so there's newer, fancier things, right? There's some shiny stuff and all that kind of stuff. But man, it felt like home. It, it felt like home. I'm back in the same office. Uh, it, it, it's, you know, it's it's home, and it, it's really, really exciting to be to be back here. We're going to go with one more question in here, and then I'm going to ask Terry to go out onto the indoor for a few minutes for a little more casual. Front row left, Doug from Cleveland.com. Hey, Doug. All this stuff you're saying right now does not, is not surprising, I think, to any of us, the way you're talking about Ohio State. Good. So why, why did you leave the first time? I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to reiterate this because I think it's really important. Mike Vrabel and I sat on the same side of the table for two years, right? For two years, we're coaching here at Ohio State. And... Luke and Everett, and, and we're drawing plays, and they're doing all that kind of stuff. And he used to, he used to lean over, he used to elbow me. He says, you know, when I'm head coach, I'm going to hire you. And I said, that's really good, Mike, because when I'm head coach, I'm going to hire you. <laughs> and we go back and forth, and we laugh about it. And we're friends. We're good friends. And he had a big job. And he had, he had, a, uh, he had a new thing going on. And, and, you know, I'm a loyal person. And, and, you know, if you're my friend, you're my friend for life. And so he called and he asked. And for whatever reason, at that time, it felt like the right thing to do. And, and it did. And I, I'm telling you, it was not a mistake for me to go. I don't, I, don't, I don't regret a single day being down there because I'm better for the experience. I'm a better coach. I'm a better man. I'm a better uh, husband. A lot of things that, that I didn't expect to happen that I'm so excited about. But that's why. Because he asked me. And I, I don't want you to think it was anything more dramatic than that. And at that time, I wasn't leaving Ohio State. I was going to work with him. I hope that makes sense to you guys. And, and I loved it, and that's why. Did you ever think when you made that decision that you might be back at Ohio I don't, State? You know, it's so funny because I really believe that all of these things that happen in my career are God-directed, and I don't think that there's another thing. I, I really don't. This is it, and I am immersed in this. And when I was there, I was immersed in that. And I didn't think about it. I didn't look for it. I didn't. I, I, I don't. You know. So I just go, and just and just let life take me where it's taking me, and go and go try to be be the best I can at wherever I'm at. And I am. That's and, and I'm back because I missed it. I, I I know what I know. I know what you know. And this opportunity didn't. It just didn't come out of the sky, right? I mean, it, there was a reason. And so that that's why I'm back. And that's so I don't know the answer to that. Did I go and think I was coming back? No. But I, I didn't think I was going there to begin with when I came here the first time. Does that make sense? It does. I'll, I'll, let, I'll finish on this. And so do you think the way it did work out, you're back now with a promotion, with more responsibility. You're back with a higher salary. Did you have to leave to create this next opportunity? Do you think you could, could you be in this very spot if you never would have left Ohio State? Or do you think you had to take that chance I and had, learn what you learned? Yeah. To prove to people, yeah, I can be the defensive coordinator here. I, I don't, I don't know that. You have to ask other people that question. You know, I just show up to work and work as hard as I can and do the best job I can and see how things go. I mean, I really don't have an answer for that because that that's out of my hands, right? I didn't feel that. I wasn't saying, hey, I got to go somewhere else in order to, to come back. I didn't say I got to go somewhere else to advance my career. I really don't think of my career in, in those terms. I hope, and maybe that, I don't know. Maybe I just don't think about things, but. I certainly do, don't think about that. Does that make sense? I don't know. I do want to say one thing in general, yeah, Jerry, right. before. Absolutely. I, I just want to tell you guys how much I appreciate your professionalism. This was a long process, right? And you guys know that. And there was a lot of stuff going on. And you had opportunities to do things that might have been less professional than the way you were. And the manner in which you handled things in this entire process, and some of you reached out, and some of you didn't, and I get all of that. I just want you to know how much I appreciate that. I value your professionalism and the, the way you guys do your work. It meant a lot to me and, and, and enabled me to do my job and, and, and finish as well as we did and as well as we could uh, in, in my other job. So I just want to tell you guys, I, I just really appreciate that very much. I want to thank you for that, okay?
Thank you, Coach. Thanks, yeah, we'll Gary. pop out on to the end.